Hello, hello, hello. Hope you guys are doing fine. Hope you are uh, being healthy and uh, things are going well. I uh, I am Steve Chapman of Fishing Florida Radio, and we're going to do what I'm calling, as you can see from those amazing graphics that I paid so much for. This is live Fishing Florida Radio, live from the Casa Episode 2. We're going to talk about some good stuff, and then we're going to bring in a lot of new friends. This uh, Today, we'll t- start off with uh, a YouTuber named Topwater Johnny. He will be on with us in a little bit. We'll go from Topwater Johnny to Real Time USA. Uh, he has a nationwide virtual fishing tournament that he's putting on, Lenny Stro- Strobel. We'll talk to him for a few minutes, and then we're going to break it out and talk to Elite Angler from the Bassmaster Elites brand and card, which should be absolutely ridiculous and uh, good to see. And then to cap it all off, not last but not least, um, we will talk to a very good friend. Well, Brandon's a very good friend of mine too. And, and we will talk to a very good friend of mine, Dennis Isbister from Wild Fish Wild Places. So hopefully... This is a little bit something new that you guys can take your mind off the quarantine and uh, see how things are going. Um, But we're going to start it off, and I'm going to get Mike involved in this. So while I get Mike involved, I have a little video for you to watch on one of our sponsors because they, you know what, they, they want, they want in. So here we go. Right now, I'm calling our boy, Mike Ortigo. I can hear it in my ears. You guys can't hear it. So hopefully, he picks up here soon. I'm going to hang up with him. Uh, I guess Mike is going to have to call me back. Let me. I had Messenger open. And then let me just put Mike is, oh, hell. He just wrote, oh, hell now. Let me call Mike back because he's right there. I'm going to call him again, and we'll get him on and see how he is doing uh, with all the things that he's got going on. Because I wanted him to hear some of the news that we had, we had, uh, we are doing. This is not on fa- on YouTube yet. This is uh, on Facebook only. Nips, and let me just say hi to everybody real fast. There's a lot of people on here watching. And we appreciate it. Obviously, Mike isn't going to answer. I have no idea. It will be on, this will be on YouTube later. So uh, you can comment and check it out from there. So I'm going to hang up there since I can't get a hold of Mike. Um, if you are if you don't know, some great news happening in the industry. Well, there's some news for the channel. Oh, I think I got Mike. Hold on here. Here we go. Hopefully. Mike. Hello. Can you hear me? I was trying to get on my laptop. Oh, that, y- y- can you hear me? Great. Yeah, I can hear you perfect. How are you, man? Good. How are you? Not live from La Casa. Live from the ca- look at those. How 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 expensive things those. I love graphics. you working your bilingual. <laughs> that's all. That's all I can say. How are you, man? All right, hanging in there, man. How are you? I am doing well. Uh, I'm Happy still- birthday to uh, Thomas. Yes, Thomas is ten today. He. Uh, not all the stuff we ordered the came in, digits, but double digits. I know double digits. It's kind of scary, man. It's kind of scary. Uh, you know, last week when we talked, we were going through some of the stuff that was going on with tackle webs. We were talking about how, you know, tackle webs are made here in the United States and how great they are. And, uh, I mean, what's, what's been happening with, with you? I mean, are you, are you able to go fishing or do anything right now? Well, been able to get out wood out in the woods, been able to do a little bit of fishing, but a lot of the boat cl- 
ramps are jam packed. Yeah. So in the weekends is just insanity. So definitely staying off the water on the weekends, but also a lot of work. So we've got, uh, some bags coming off for boat paddle boards. So that's getting finished up now. We got, uh, the thrasher toppers, bucket toppers. We've got some, you know, those are coming out of production line so we can get that filled up again. So those will be available soon. And, um, Unfortunately, CCA Star, we have a whole event sponsorship with them. And uh, so we have those bags getting ready to go. They're going to be finishing up. And they have the nice CCA Star logo on them. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Lisa will be giving those away at different events. But now it's been po- postponed to July, I believe. So I think they're starting sometime in July. So a lot of things are – it's a moving man target with a lot of different things. So – it's been pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's going to be any time soon where this craziness isn't going to be like it is. It doesn't seem like. Yeah, I just, actually just got a email in that the uh, Skeeter Tournament uh, Owners Tournament in Texas, in Lake Fork, that's supposed to be June 11th normally. And it's a big event. I mean, it's like 3,400 anglers. Yeah. So it's a huge event, and they're they're sitting. They they postponed it till next year. So, you know, there's going to be a lot more of these type things going to have to be pushed off, just because of safety reasons. And reality is, if you're not pl- you're planning ahead several months for these events, and you know, again, I think we kind of touched on it last time about ICAST. You know, if you've got a small company trying to get in there and, you know, travel plans, booking hotels, getting your booths, you know, it's it's going to be uh, every, all these things are going to have to really be taken care of, you know, taking a look at it, and people are going to have to start making calls here shortly. What are, uh, Butch asked a question on here and I put it on the thing. What are your thoughts on what are your thoughts as a business owner for ICAST? Is it something that you're still planning for i mean i know i know we have planned for it but we've kind of postponed a lot of that stuff do you think icast is going to be a go as of right now icast is a go um fortunately for us being you know in the same basically town or area as icast it's not as massive an undertaking because even though we book hotels and we've got booths set up and it's a bigger booth than we've ever done before and we were going to launch some cool product there, um, you know, it may not. We may push it back. We may just do a virtual, you know, online push for a launch of product. So there's a lot of things now where that was our main goal, focusing on that ICAST release. Now, you know, we've got to come up with plan plan C. What, you know, what can we do Yeah. those different items yeah. when we're going to do that? And, you know, the thing is, we don't have to book hotel, you know, air flights. I mean, are the people going to be able to get here? Um, it's an international show. So you've got people from China. You've got people from all over the Europe, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that are coming in. And it doesn't, you know, that, that's normal. But now, you know, are those people going to attend? Is it going to be a Florida show? Yeah. Is it just yeah. people in Florida are going to come drive? I mean, then what, are they going to stay at the hotels? Is the convention center even going to be allowed? I mean, the Orange County Convention Center, which is a huge place, but that is where where they're doing COVID, you know, testing for the coronavirus. Yeah, right now. Yeah. So I mean, where they're gonna we're gonna just have an event there while they're in the middle of testing people. <laughs> well, I mean, there yeah. are there are some people that go there that aren't that aren't sick that just go there to to get uh, tested for no apparent reason at all. Some people like to have things stuck in their throats, <laughs> their noses and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Boudreau. Uh, uh, I don't have, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had to have. I, uh, you know, I was, I was uh, not feeling. Oh, I still not one hundred percent. I, I was. I had to have one of those, not a test done, but they stuck a Q-tip up my nose a few weeks ago, and honestly, I, I'm pretty sure they touched my brain. It was small. make your eye twitch. <laughs> I did one of those bits for a second. Um. I was going to go through some news. I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Did uh, you know? Last week we had a friend of ours call us and or text us and tell us the problems that Aaron had. He had a couple seizures on the boat and he went out and um, had to have brain surgery. 
But I don't know if you realize this. He was out fishing two days ago, which is fantastic news. I saw that. He put up a post that he was post-op yes. and out doing it. And, I mean, what a time to have that situation come at hand, um, of all things, you know, where – this, you know, going to the hospital is frowned upon and all this. And all of a sudden to have that on top where like, man, you've got to go get the surgery done ASAP. Yeah. And I mean, it happened quick and, you know, God bless him, man. I'm glad, you know, the surgeons got, got it taken care of and, and yeah. he was back out there, man. And, you know, yeah, I mean, who I, knows? Maybe this will make him more focused. <laughs> well, I, I I joked about it, not really meant to joke about it. We've we've had Aaron on several times. One of the problems with Aaron, and not that there's a problem with it, you'll be talking to him, and out of nowhere, a bird will fly by, and the next thing you know, you're on a 15 minute conversation on a robin, and you're thinking to yourself, where did this? How did this whole thing start? Yeah, uh, but it's Aaron. You're used to it, but still, one of the best anglers on the planet. There's no doubt, no doubt, and I'm glad he, you know, for him and his family that. Yes. Everything went as well, and I, I think he mentioned in that post he's waiting for the biopsies. So hopefully that comes in, and you know he's got a game plan to be out in that water, and you know, and back to you know back to doing what he does, which is just snagging fish. Yeah, you uh, know. Now we have a couple new series kind of going on. I don't know if you've started doing it, but we're going to do one called. With uh, Hammer and I are going to be doing one called Genesis of a Fishery, and well, you'll see more about that. But also, you're going to have one on your boat where you're going to rebuild the the flats boat, correct? Yeah, the Florida Fisher is a 19 foot Florida Fisher tunnel hole. They were manufactured here in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. They were made out of Ruskin, Florida. Uh, it's a West Coast tunnel hole flat boat. But it's got jack plate on it, and it's a tower, so you can ride from the tower, drive it from the tower. And uh, it was a boat that I fished a lot because I, one of the the guys that owned that that mold and made those boats, I became friends with his son Dustin at Bass Pro Shops when I was, you know, just starting to get in my captain's license and yeah. cutting my teeth yeah. in that in the industry. And we became friends and fished a lot on that boat out of Cockroach Bay in Tampa in that area. And um, then we took it down to the Keys and we ran around and it just kind of full circle came around where I was able to purchase the boat from him. It was his grandfather's boat. And, uh, you know, now we're going to try to get it to a point where, you know, it's back in back in shape, man. And uh, looking good, looking tight. I'm going to, you know, we're going to go and take it. You know, we're going to take it. We're going to talk about what the costs are, all the headaches that may come up of things. I mean, we're not going to, I'm not going to be asking people for anything as far as that's concerned. We're going to go as far as I can with the budget. Yeah. And yay, man, this is what it costs to get X, Y, Z done. And we'll talk about the trailer. We'll talk about, you know, I know there's fiberglass work that needs to be done. There's some hatches that need to be, you know, I want to get fixed up and windshield needs to be redone and center console. I want to make bigger. I need the gas tank to be bigger. Um, You know, I want to put a trolling motor on it. You know, you and I have talked about that. Hook up, you know, the jack plates and all those other things. And, and you know, it doesn't even have a seat. So we're looking at putting a leaning post in there, um, different things like that, using Optima batteries. How do, how do we wire up the, the trolling motors, you know, Optima batteries. So if we can get a series of those things, I think it would be a pretty cool video. And then hopefully have it all set and done, man. And, uh, you know, that thing is pretty as it can be. And then we'll go fishing. <laughs> Oh, we'll fish between two. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see how much how much easier things get while we improve. Yeah. Like once we get a depth finder on there, you know, and, you know, once we get a trolling motor in there and, you know, I've got some ideas I'm going to try on the trolling motor that's not usually used the way I'm thinking. So we might try it. The trolling motors might not work. They, you know, they might be something that doesn't work out for us and we'll have to figure something else out, but. All these things, hopefully, we'll be able to document it, and people can give us suggestions. Maybe they've got a suggestion. I mean, I want to make it a hardcore fishing machine, but also I got to think about, you know, I got two kids and a wife that love to go boating, so I've also got to soften the edges of it and make it comfortable for, you know, riding, which is normal for a captain. You want to make it comfortable for your clients, but be able to have it where I can take the kids out and the wife out and run around the islands and, you know, fish a little bit and and then, you know, go, you know, wading around and looking for – 
shells or whatever that that case may be too as well so it's going to be a family size fishing or hopefully fishing first then family type boat but it'll be a it'll be an interesting ride project that we're going to do and and everything will be budgeted and and we'll be honest of what the costs are and and that's that and hopefully find the right people to to help us accomplish the goal of what we're trying to do with this boat I know we got somebody who has some push pole holders for us. Hammer Tech Marine is going to probably get us some push pole holders. So oh, that'll cool. be great because that's Jeff. And uh, it sh- it, I can't wait to, to do it and see the whole – because I know what the boat looks like now. And I know what you – you the way you do things. So that boat's going to be meticulous, and I can't wait for it. So it's going to be awesome. I, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. I'm hoping, man. I'm hoping. So – I know it's a fishing machine. We've gone out in the family. It's fun to go running around now with it. Um, there were some things I had to do ahead of time to even get in the water and wet test it and make sure things are running right. And uh, so we had to do some prior things to get it to this point. But now we can start really putting in some some of the cooler items to it and really going to see what what is it going to take to get a bigger gas tank. Yeah. What's, you know, the gas tank, the, you know, a common, you know, a lot of common issues with it, those things like the gas tank, you know, the gauge doesn't work. Why does it not work? You know, you know, it was an old gas tank. You know, yeah. my line's good. You know, all kinds of things. So, well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I got some other people I gotta, I gotta get in touch with. But we're gonna do this ne- next Wednesday again, same time, and you'll be the first person, of course. I- I'm calling. Who are we talking to next? We have uh, Top Water Johnny is next. So nice. We, we, we well, you know, we have. Let me. I got things all messed up. We have uh, Topwater Johnny, then we have Lenny Strobel, Brandon Card, and then Dennis Isbister from Wild Fish Wild Places. Card and Isbister. Yeah, so it should be. This should be a desert angler, man. I know, man. So this should be fun. So I'm going to uh, say goodbye to you and say thank you and be ready. And of course, we'll talk before then. But thank you for coming on. Okay, dude. I'll talk to you soon. Later, bro. See you. Bye. Well, there we have it. We had Mike on there. Let me get rid of that. I'm going to try to call right now um, from Topwater Johnny real fast. Let's see if he'll answer. While we do that, I'm going to run another commercial for Optima Batteries. It's one thing to call yourself the ultimate power source. It's another thing to prove it. The all-new Optima Yellow Top with Pure Flow technology with up to three times the battery life. Unsurpassed performance built to fit today's vehicles. Optima, the ultimate power source. Well, there we have it. A little thank you to Optima Batteries. Next with us, uh, if you haven't seen his YouTube channel or his Instagram, he is the king of... I'd like to say, let me put, let me make sure I put this on here. Hold on, Topwater Johnny. He is the king of topwater fishing here in Florida. From uh, you're in Claremont, right? Yep, in Claremont. Claremont, yep. my boy Johnny Campbell or Topwater Johnny. How are you this morning? Uh, today, I'm doing great, Steve. This is awesome, man. When you extended this invitation, I said we we, we live so close together. I said I gotta raise my hand and say, pick me. I'll be happy to talk. And I'm gonna. <laughs> I mean, if there's anybody else that has a channel, by all means, I'm more than willing to, you know, I, I, it's nice to hear other people's stories on how they got interested in the outdoors. How did you start? Uh, how did you get involved in the outdoors? Oh, I got started. I, I caught my first channel catfish at four years old. So I was hooked ever since then. And I was a catfish, carp, and bluegill guy as a kid. And then as I grew up, I kind of drifted away from fishing and then one day, I probably was 22, 23, and I was over at my girlfriend's apartment, and I went out to a little pond in her backyard, and I took a bluegill, and I casted it out on a hook. Did we have the same girlfriend? I, and we may have. <laughs> and I, I, was just, I was just screwing around, and, and I caught a bluegill, put it on a hook, and casted it out there. And this, and this bass exploded on it. Yeah. And that was when I got hooked again back on fishing. I kind of drifted away yeah. when I was in college. Yeah, I understand. When, when I got back as a, a young adult, and that brought me back to fishing again. And I said, oh, my God, I forgot how much fun it was. Yeah, it's so much. That's kind of the same thing that happened to me. I fished. So I went in. I, I lived up north in Michigan. And my dad used to take me smallmouth fishing or, uh, you know, just all types of fishing in, in the Great Lakes. And, and then. 
I played basketball and baseball and all this swimming and all this other stuff. And I forgot how much I loved fishing. I met this girl. She had a pond behind her house. First cast, I caught like a five-pound bass. Ever since then, the addiction is completely back. And that's wonderful. How how has this... uh, this pandemic and this quarantine is this hurting your fishing i mean what are you doing right now for yourself well in case you didn't know when you said the word energy believe it or not i'm actually a professional speaker by trade oh i didn't know that so i travel around and give motivational talks and personal development and business talks to business owners and corporations nice. so when this happened it wiped out me traveling but I started just going around fishing and yeah. doing even more. So for me, unfortunately, I couldn't do my work, but I could try. I could still fish. Yeah. And so I make a lot of friends. So I fish behind their houses, just like you, Steve. That's yeah. why I told you, you better make some friends, <clears throat> and so that they let you park in front of their house and walk through the yard and go fish. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. Really what I. That's really what I've been doing. I ha- I can't go to my public spots in Winter Garden in other places because it's closed mm-hmm. because of the you know the, the the pandemic but there are homes where i live in claremont and i can go behind their houses and they don't fish it yeah. so i just go out there and fish now you you try to put up you got your youtube channel you have your instagram channel you go to topwater johnny you can find both of those if you go to both right yes they can find them both at topwater johnny yes now mm-hmm. you do how many videos do you put out every week I put out two videos a week. The first one on Monday is me fishing with a new lure. Mm-hmm. Then on when, on Thursday, I do a lure review. Okay. And if I've caught fish on that review, I include that in the video as well. And then I do the same thing on Instagram on Tuesdays and Fridays. So, I, so they get a highlight of a fish I caught, and then on Friday, you get a review of that lure that I was using. If 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 someone had to say to you your favorite topwater bait of all time, what would it be? Oh my gosh, it would have to be the dragonfly. Really? Yep. I, matter of fact, I was ready for you. There, isn't that a isn't that a beautiful thing? Right okay, there? now wait a minute. That isn't the dragonfly from Lunker Hunt. That's a different dragonfly. That dragonfly is from our buddy Captain Ken. Okay. In a Coe, Florida. Here, he designs and creates those things. Captain Ken is unbelievable. Yeah. At his design of that. And look at that with that little trailer hook in the back there. Yeah. Short stripes, and then you got one in the front. So that's my favorite. Like, you want to have excitement. Like, my most recent YouTube video, people will look, is me fishing with a dragonfly. Yeah. That, a yellow one, a bumblebee. And that's my funnest uh, lure. My coolest, got to show it to you. Look at that. The, is that like a bat wing kind of bait? That's an NZ crawler. The NZ crawler that does like that. Oh yes, yes. I love those. I love those lures. And so that's a cool one. Got one more for you. The Jackobinski. Oh yeah, that's a good one. They cannot. The bass can't resist this one right here. And then finally, this little thing here by Mega Bass called the Dying Shad. This thing floats on top. And it's just, they, they can't resist it. I got to get one of those uh, dragonflies. I got to spot that uh, hammer and my boy Craig. The dragonflies are just, they uh, literally the other day, I don't want to put the video up. The I have a video of bass literally jumping out of the water to eat dragonflies midair. I'm telling you, that right there is the funnest fishing because it's like, they grew up eating dragonflies. Yeah, and worms. And worms. They grew up so so even big bass still remember. Yes, that's a that's a good one for them. Yeah. And so, I always throw dragonflies a lot because it's just fun to fish with them. I throw them in the lily pads. I throw them in open water and just the bass remember, man. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? What now? What's the biggest? What's the biggest bass you've ever caught? Six point five is the biggest I ever caught. On a Lunker Hunt link, which was these two little minnows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Lunker Hunt. Wait a minute. I think I've seen that. Yeah. The Lunker Hunt link right there. And it was like, I'm a big match the hatch kind of guy on top water. So if I see them popping on shad or minnows, 
then I'm going to switch up and lock and load on them. Yeah. So then I'll do that. Lock and, and load. I, I like that. I'll go after them like that. So the, my biggest one was on that, um, on a Lucker Hunt Lynx. And, but yeah, I use frogs. I use anything top water. I'm a sucker for it. So Tackle Warehouse has got my credit card yep. on file. I know. <laughs> Me too. I give a shout out to Tackle Webs in every video that I put online. I'm waiting for them to start sending me some residuals from people that buy stuff off the stuff we, we put out. Hey, you know what? I don't make any money off of anybody, but I'm a sucker for lures, man. If they want to send them to me, I'll fish them. You know, like like I saw one Livingston just came out with this little top water. It's yeah. almost like a like a half of a frog almost. It kind of it's like a a. A spoon shape. Yeah, lure. that Livingston lure walking boss two junior. I just ordered it. <laughs> I, I I you could have had the one I have. No, I ordered I ordered the new one they're coming oh, out okay. with. They got a part two. So you can still send me the one you got. I, I, got I think I have the part two, by the way. Uh hold on, hold on. You do the one that makes the noise. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where the hell is it? It's in one of these this right here. Okay, that's the one that makes the noise, right? Yeah, it has four different sound effects. And right. if you touch it, if you actually touch the front and the hook itself, what it does is you can change the, you can change the, uh, the tune that it plays. It has four different things. That's um, the one I want. <laughs> yeah, this, I, I, uh, I have a little friend at Livingston, so they sent me maybe a couple. Okay, well... Well, there you go. Well, if you want to send me one, I'm open to that. Because, um, Tackle Warehouse put me on the wait list for that one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I understand that. Well, uh, I got a whole bunch of people I got to still get to, but I wanted to say thank you. We need to go fishing one day together for sure. You're, I'm in a popka. You know that. Right. I know you're in a popka. You know where I want, to, I want us to go? I want us to go fish for those Bear Mondays. Up in that, up in that town, up, up above us. I have passes to go. That's that looks like the ultimate top water experience. Um, maybe not top water. But they, it just, you know, I know they they'll eat anything. Right, but the level of explosion is just incredible. Oh, from the previews. Yeah, uh, I've been I've been out to the Bear Money place before they restarted it years and years ago, three right. or four times. And when I went, the first one of the times I went. The average fish was like ten or twelve pounds. Right. That just and they just they, kill everything. That one, and also I want to go to the because um, you mentioned it where you were out there at the resort, Four Seasons, or where were you at? Oh, with uh, with my boy uh, uh, Mark Benson up at the Ritz Carlton. Yes. Yes. Oh I've my gosh. I've spoken there, and I drove in one time, and I was in a full suit. And I wanted to stop and go fly fishing with the guy that was out there. <laughs> Mark Benson, hands down, one of the best dudes you'll ever meet in your life. So Just, I want to go there too. <laughs> I you want to? After this, you have you have my phone number. Let's text. Let's put it together. We'll do like collab videos, and I'll have Mark take us fishing. That'll be awesome, man. That would be so awesome. And hopefully, you and I'll be able to go to ICAST this year. Fingers crossed. Yeah, let's hope. I um I have a, a guy out of Chicago because that's where I'm originally from is Chicago, and I have a guy there <clears throat> who owns a tackle shop, and he puts me on. He, I'm a I'm a part of his group. Yeah. So I got to go last year. So that's like heaven for me. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, let's hope that they have it. I mean, it's a weird time. Uh, yep. Everyone, make sure you go to Topwater Johnny's Instagram page, his YouTube channel. I appreciate everything coming on. We'll do this again. And let's let's make sure we get out there and go fishing here soon. All right, then, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you, dude. I'll talk to you soon. Yep. Later, bro. That's Topwater Johnny. Um, great dude. Go check out his channel. Uh, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna run another commercial real fast for the new Diego sunglasses. At the same time, I'm gonna call Lenny Strobel. So hang out here, and we'll be back in here 30 seconds. <laughs>
Welcome back. Hey. Uh, now, uh, let me do a little introduction and say hello. Oh, I don't see you there, Lenny, yet. Maybe the the service is weird. I don't know. I don't. I hear you, but I don't see you. All right, how about now? Oh, I see you now. There you go. Hold on. Let me put Lenny up. Guys, welcome to the show. Lenny Strobel from Real Time USA. He has a nationwide catch and release cha uh, challenge. How are you, man? Excellent, excellent, Steve. Thank you so much for uh, uh, having me join in on your radio talk show. That's pretty cool. Thank you for being part of this. Tell me a little bit about yourself and tell me about Real Time USA. So, oh, hold on, hold on. Time I, hold on before you start. I was supposed to give applause. Uh, there you go. Sorry, I have sound effects and I don't know how to use them yet. Go ahead, Lenny. Hey, I like that uh, photo you put of me down there. That That's pretty cool. I told you I was going to do it. <laughs> I might know a little bit about graphics. That's fantastic. Butch says hello, by the way. I'm sorry? Butch Finnegan says, what's up, Lenny? So, oh, so what's up, Butch? How are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> All right, so I'm a chef. I'm a captain by trade. I do freelance work, and uh, I love fishing. I've always fished. Uh, all my life, I've loved bass fishing. I think I think everyone had a bamboo stick, a bobber, a hook, and a hot dog at one point, and a Zebco. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. So a um, few years back, about four years ago, I used to do a lot of bass fishing in Florida with a really close friend of mine. We'd go out. I'd watch these three kids catch some bass, get on their phone, do the social media, Put the photos up on the on Instagram and, and Facebook, and that's what inspired me to put together Real Time USA. About two weeks went by. I called a bunch of my friends from across the country. I said, "Look, let's do a bass tournament online, a virtual one. Yeah, four hours of four hours of fishing. Buy yourself a newspaper to validate that you're catching those fish that day, and blow it up on Facebook. I'll start the thread, blow it up on Facebook." Let's see where it goes. Well, 76 of my friends, nine different states. Uh, I couldn't believe the response we got. It got so much traction that USA Today newspaper contacted me and asked me what I was doing. That's awesome. Yeah, so from that, it launched Real Time USA. And, Steve, what's really unique about this, anyone in the United States can fish anywhere in the United States. You sign up online. Real Time USA, and that's R E E L, Real Time USA. You sign up online, you fill out your pre fish form the day May 16th, buy yourself a newspaper, take a photo of the newspaper dated May 16th, go fish your four hours, your time zone between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., your time zone, and catch as many bass as you can doing a selfie photo. You're not weighing them, you're not, not measuring them, it's how many bass you can catch, largemouth bass, in a four hour period. The gift prizes tell you are incredible. If you go on our website, Real Time USA, you will see. And I'm just trying to pull it up right here. And I'm. Can I switch? I don't think you can. You have a. It, oh yeah, you do. Oh, look at that! I can. You can look at. We're learning together. How, Hold how on. About let me, this? I'm going to go full screen on you. Hold on. There, you're full okay. screen. Sweet. So there's the website. And these are the – this is the overall grand prize. Whoever catches the most in four hours. I have 50 divisions, 50 winning divisions from kids to senior citizens. You can fish live bait, artificials, on boat, kayak. Here's the grand prize, a two-night stay at Roland Martin's place. Now, this Roland is Mary available Martin's everywhere, place. correct? This is nationwide. Nationwide. You could fish any pond, any lake, any stream, any honey hole, drain ditch, wherever you want to go. These gift prizes are so incredible. Um, it's awesome. So that's the grand prize. And if you go on my website, you'll see all the other prizes that every divisional winner is going to take place and win. Yeah, that's I awesome. Raise, yeah, I raise awareness and funds for a multiple sclerosis society, which is very close to my heart. That's great. And for every paid entry, a dollar goes to MS. And we have exceeded our financial and awareness for MS every year. 
And yeah. I just had a, a live chat with the president uh, last week. So I know they're really pleased on what, what I'm doing, what Real Time USA is doing, and all the tremendous sport, uh, support I'm getting from all the major uh, sponsors, which I'm so fortunate and so glad to have yeah, that's, to keep this going. That's just yeah. absolutely fantastic. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I, I got to make it somewhat quick. So anyone can join. They go on the website, realtimeusa.com, correct? Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, for the kids, that's a, one of the prizes they're going to win. We might have lost you there, Lenny. Hopefully not. Yeah, we did lose Lenny. The network is poor. Guys, what you need to do is if you uh, get a chance, go to realtimeusa.com. Check it out. Uh, Lenny's there. Uh, I'll put some links in the description below on the YouTube channel. But go check him out. He has a, a great, uh, it's a great thing. I'm going to run another commercial real fast here from Optima. So hang out with me for a few minutes. While I do that 15 seconds, I'm going to go to hold our boy, Brandon Card. It's one thing to call yourself the ultimate power source. It's another thing to prove it. The all-new Optima Yellow Top with pure flow technology with up to three times the battery life. Unsurpassed performance built to fit today's vehicles. Optima, the ultimate power source. I'm going to go live now to a dude I know a little bit about. A little bit good friend. He's an elite angler. Maybe you've heard of him. The rookie of the year a few years back. Um, and just one of the nicest dude in, dudes in the world. Brandon Card. How are you, man? Doing pretty good, man. How's everything been? I am doing well. Uh, what are you doing these days? What, I mean, what are you, what, what's been happening with you now that you guys aren't fishing every other weekend? Hey, uh, do I need to turn my phone uh, the other way, or am I good like that? No, no, you're good like that. You're perfect. I can see you perfectly. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I've just been uh, been trying to stay on the water. I've uh, been fishing uh, a lot just right here at the house. I live about five to seven minutes from Fort Loudon Lake, so i uh, just been uh, going there and, uh, you know, just kind of relearning that body of water. I haven't really had much opportunity to fish Fort Loudon in the spring of the year in the last several years. So been going there a lot. I've also made a few trips up to my home lake, Norse Lake, mm -hmm. uh, been, been going up there. Uh, that's a lot more clear water fishery. So we've been doing some sight fishing and just, just having fun, man. Now, normally you'd be on the road. I mean, all right. I mean, quarantine life. I mean, it's gotta be kind of nice for, for, for the beautiful wife, Kelly. I mean, she's probably enjoying this or is she sick of you? Well, I think at first she was enjoying it. Now, now she's ready for us to get back. In <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe that. Um, I mean, this is, this is a, a weird, a weird time. And I mean, you're never home during the summer. Never. No. no, I mean, like, honestly, I think this is the most that I've ever slept in my bed at for like like consecutive nights yeah like probably ever since i started fishing professionally so i mean it, it's strange man i mean it's just uh it's crazy times hopefully we can get back to to normal here pretty soon yeah yeah now when you have this this time and do you start looking at like looking at maps differently for upcoming events and stuff like that or are you doing any homework at home at all uh, I mean, right now I've just put everything on hold uh, because it's it's hard to do homework for uh, a lake that you don't know when you're going to be going to it. So I mean, hopefully, you know, we'll we'll be going to the Sabine River. That's the next one that they haven't postponed. Hopefully, we'll be going to the Sabine River in late May and Lake Fork the first of June. So, I mean, technically, I mean, I could start preparing for, for them, but then what happens if they get postponed, you know? So, yeah. so I mean, you know, it's kind of like I'm just waiting to see what's going to go down as far as, you know, when these events are going to be rescheduled. Uh, because, I mean, from the emails that I keep getting from Bassmaster, that they have every intention to uh, do a full season. And so, you know, that's probably going to take us into the fall of the year. So, you know, why do research for a body of water, and, you know, and start kind of coming up with the game plan for summertime fishing mm -hmm. if, in fact, we're going to be fishing that body of water in November. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so. Well, tell me about, 
Because I didn't get to go to the Classic. This is the first time we haven't seen each other at the Classic in like eight years. Yeah, Isn't that man. weird? That's crazy, man. That's that's probably why I did so good there. Cause, Shut cause up. You weren't there to Shut do up. I am good luck to you. <laughs> Uh, Big girl, on the other hand. Oh yeah, yeah, hard. yeah. That'll just kill you, man. That'll just kill you. Uh, what was what was the, you? You had a great finish at the classic. I mean, what? How? How did your week? I mean, did you have a good practice? How did the week work out for you? Not really. It was actually a pretty brutal practice. Uh, the first day, I found an area. Uh, the first day of practice, rather. Uh, I found a little area where I caught a five pounder and a four pounder. I think you put those on Facebook, didn't you? Uh, I don't, I don't think I did. Oh, you didn't? Okay. I, I, <laughs> I thought it's that, that picture. That was, that was kind of in, yeah, that, that one was later on, but, uh, but the practice is so scheduled. I mean, it's so spread out that basically we practice for three days. Then we have like two off days for media like media, day. media stuff and all that. And then we have another practice day and then even another off day. So so basically, essentially, I found these fish a week before the tournament ever even started. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of made like a quick pass through that area and caught those two good fish. And then I just kept going and didn't really know what I had found. I didn't know if it was good or bad. You know, I was hoping to find a lot more. Um, you know, I, I caught a few fish, you know, the rest of the practice, obviously, but nothing to really speak of. And so... I was just thinking like, well, I guess I'll start there. Uh, yeah. You know, if I, if I catch fish there, then good. If not, I'll just, you know, go freestyle it and just try to find something as I go. So that was kind of my plan. And uh, I went straight there. It really wasn't very far from the takeoff at all. And I think on my like second or third cast, I, I caught, you know, pretty decent keeper. So I was like, all right. So the, I, I actually, I caught the first fish of the classic. Um, so, uh, I was like, well, maybe I should stay. And so I just kind of hunkered into that area and, and really just made the most of it, uh, just in that one small little area for all three days and, uh, walked away with a ninth place finish. So I'll, I'll definitely take it for the, for the terrible practice that I had. How, how amazing is it to, like, I think it's every fisherman's dream. Anyone who's ever caught a fish to go the best, the classic is the greatest event in our in our industry. How awesome is it to get on stage and have all those people rooting for you? And what is the feeling like? I mean, for somebody who's never going to do it because, you know, I'm never going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I was watching, I was actually watching the classic uh, like day one and day two the other day. And somebody they're interviewing uh, said, this is the closest that will ever be to a rock star yeah. in fishing. And like, honestly, like that's the best explanation I can, I can think of. I mean, ne you know, no other event, you know, throughout the whole year, it don't matter whether you're on the elite series or whether you're fishing some other trail. I mean, nothing's going to, you know, get you on a stage with an arena full of people just packed out, you know, just cheering you on. So, I mean, it's it's a dream come true, man. I I went uh, the first Bassmaster Classic I ever went to it was where uh, we met. Well, well, no, the the one that I ever uh, actually went as oh, a okay. fan. Okay. As a fan, it, it was uh, in two thousand and four, and and like it was packed out. It was in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, Takahiro won that event yeah, on Lake yeah. Wiley. And so I was way up in the dang nosebleeds, man. Like, like it was a packed crowd. And so, you know, just being there, just kind of like looking around the arena and just seeing how big it was, you know, that right there is really kind of what fueled the fire to, to you know, to, to get me to try to pursue this, you know, professionally. Yeah, it, it's so cool because – Man, I remember meeting you at the Classic when you just won Rookie of the Year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, we're, I, I don't want to say the guy's name. You had a manager with you. And I remember, I think the manager asked me not to put that one question I asked. I mean, I asked if there were groupies. And uh, you gave the most honest opinion of everybody in that place. I don't even know what I said anymore. I think I'm going to find <laughs> it and put it on the next Live from the Casa show. But you said, you know, we... we I don't want to get us in trouble. I think I'll text it to you later on. I think I, I think I said though. I think I said there there ain't no dang groupies out here. No, they're like, all double baggers, is what you said. <laughs> no, we, no, that's no, what you, you said. did. That's what you said. Oh, I said yeah. I said, yeah you're okay. Right. <laughs> and we 
and it was the most honest answer. And it was just so funny because that's where the, the friendship started. I mean, you've been here at the house, you know, you know, my wife and Thomas and I know Kelly. I, 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 yeah. I'm so, ha- I mean, when you get in those tournaments, Thomas and I like start freaking out. Like you're like, we start the, the classic was here. Well, we didn't go to the classic cause Thomas was in state championships for swimming yeah. and you know, and then we didn't have swimming on Sunday, and we were, like, glued to Bassmaster Live because we're yeah. like, oh, if, if he has a good day, he might be able to catch, even though what's his, uh, Hank was so far ahead at that point in time. But we were like, oh, this is just – it's we're always rooting for you. You know that? We're yeah. always rooting for you. Well, I, I really appreciate all the support down there, man. You know, you got, your, your whole family and Mike and Boudreau and everybody else down yeah. there. You know, I just – Appreciate the support. Yeah. Well, okay. I have to I have to move on to somebody else. Dennis Isbister's next. He says hello, by the way. You remember Dennis? Yeah, yeah. Tell him I said hey. I will. We'll have to do this again. Hopefully you'll get on the wall. Hopefully they'll have hopefully our lives will change back to normal. I hope so, yeah. I mean I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking that, that it'll be late May, early June. That I got my fingers crossed for that. Hopefully that'll happen. Yeah. Well, I know if you guys go to Chickamauga, I'm making the run up there, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you have a pretty sweet place to, to stay. So yeah. yeah I re- well, I know I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm thinking I need to talk to that media person again. What's her name? I don't even know her name right off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, because I, I had you pegged. If I was going to the classic, she had promised me I was with you for three days. Yeah. So yeah. We could we could have some fun. Well, you can have some fun, and I can film it, and that's what I wanted to do. So, uh, I think I lost. Oh, there I got you. Again, no, I think Brandon. I lost you there for just a second. Well, thank you for doing yeah, this, yeah. man. I appreciate it. Tell Kelly we send our love and and be safe. Please be safe. I already tell uh, Sonia and Thomas. I said hey. I will, dude. I'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks. See thank ya. you, dude. Later. <laughs> that's our boy, Brandon Card. <clears throat> if you don't know Brandon, go follow him on YouTube. And he doesn't even have a YouTube channel. You can go follow him on Facebook and Instagram. And he's just one of the best dudes in the world. Okay. Last but not least, I'm calling him right now. Oh, I think I call- Oh, he tried to call me while I was on here. I'm going to run another commercial. I think I did Optima last. So I'm going to do Diego here. And I'm going to call our boy Dennis Isbister. <laughs> Now, coming from to us from Nevada. Did you just drop the phone? You did drop the phone, didn't you? I got, I got. <laughs> Hold on. I got I got a graphic for you, by the way, Dennis. What's that? Oh, there you go. This is Dennis Isbister from what Wild year? Fish Wild Places. Hey, uh, How are you, man? Oh, I'm my. good. I'm just trying to figure out my, uh, my Skype camera here, as you can see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this is this is new for me too. So that's uh, th- this is you know, it's it's kind of odd. You know, it's it's fun. How are you doing though, man? Oh, I don't know. Can you? I can't. Can you not hear me now? Yeah, I've, uh, if there's like a delay. I can hear you like ten seconds later or something. Oh, sorry. Uh, you're. What are you doing during this quarantine time? No. Yeah, it's just like rolling over and over. I wonder what's going on here. Hey, I'll I'll try to call you right back. Hang on. One Hang second. on. I know what it is. Hang tight. Hang on. Yes. How's that? Is that I better? Can, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me fine? Yeah. There we go. I don't. Do I need to do screen sharing? No. 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 Don't do screen sharing. Oh, what's going on? Butch yeah. says hello. By the way. What's up, Butch? How's Butch doing? Butch is doing well. 
What? Well, uh, hopefully you can hear me better. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah, we're this? good. I can hear you good now. Awesome. What Sorry, are you doing I'm just trying this? to get this thing off my screen. Hang on. Okay. Keep doing it. There we go. Okay. How's that look? All better? Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> You're a good looking dude. You know that, man? Yeah, man. <laughs> I put some makeup on. Ah! <laughs> you got rid of the shine? I did, yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you don't know, Dennis is the host of Wild Fish Wild Places. Has a brand new YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook. You need to go check him out. Uh, oh my God, I think your sister's on here. Is that Karen? Yeah, it's, I told them they had to, so I could at least have two watch, people watching me. Oh, okay, yeah, there's there's a couple more than two, I think. I mean, <laughs> people have been commenting and doing all sorts of yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, it was good. I saw it's good seeing Brandon. Yeah, I've seen him for a couple years. I saw him briefly last year, but yeah, it was good seeing him. And I, I, there's a pile of people. I was just messing with my sisters, making them feel bad for me. <laughs> um, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. How did you get introduced into the out? First, wait, let me, before I get that, does Karen fish? No, no. Oh, okay. I mean, she does some photo shoots for us once in a while. Oh, but, okay. But she might, you know, she's single, so you might learn to fish. There's got to be some single guys that love to fit, you know, women who, Take, who fish are sexy. <laughs> we're, we're hooking her up. Yeah. Fishing Florida radio slash Florida dating. Karen is Mr.'s dating online. <laughs> and we shouldn't say that because you know what will happen. Les will start getting on her and we don't Les, need that. Les, if, you, if, if, I, if you show up in Reno and Fallon, I'm going to whip your ass. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. How did you get introduced into the uh, the outdoors? Well, the outdoors has been a part for, for me since I was born. I've been going fishing since I was, you know, one with my grandparents on long trips. And, so you know, I started hunting when I was 12. Basically, my entire life has been <laughs> revolved, revolving around the outdoors. I mean, I basically started in construction when I was 16. Mm -hmm. um, I love the outdoors and construction along with it and being in construction allowed me to hunt and fish almost as much as I wanted. Uh, you know, so, you know, and then now it is my business. So yeah. Now you go. the, the, the TV show has been on for what? Nine, nine, ten, ten I seasons. Think we're filming season 10. And so I've been doing it for 11 years now. Yeah. That's unbelievable. That's crazy, isn't it? Favorite place you've ever been to? Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, Other than Pyramid Lake, yeah. <laughs> well, Pyramid's local, but yeah. Oh man, I gotta say, you know, just Argentina, maybe in general. Been to Argentina a lot, so. Um, what makes Argentina so good? You know, the fishing's always. I've always had great fishing down there, uh -huh. uh, and the people are awesome. Had great connections, made great friends over the years. Um, the lodges that we deal with down there, the people that we've been able to deal with over the last 10 years has just been wonderful. And I, I just, whenever I go to Argentina, it's always a great experience. I always know it's going to be good. So I think that's one of my favorite places we go, you know, but it's so hard to pick, you know, Alaska, Canada, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just all over the place. Is, the, Alaska, the Alaska episode with the amount of bugs you had on you made, I think I texted you when I watched that. I'm yeah. like, I don't know how you survived that because they were, eh, they were like a layer of skin on you. Yeah, the, that was a Russia trip, right? Kamchatka. No, was it? It was. Uh, it was ridiculous, man. Yeah, we we went to so we flew into uh, Kamchatka, you know, into into the peninsula, and then took ha Russia, the Russian army helicopters, you know, the whole yeah. deal, and flew out on the peninsula and floated the river for a week, you know, camp to camp and. It was, a, it was an amazing experience, but the first few days, I mean, the, the whole trip, the bugs were intense, but the first few days was, uh, it, the, the people that were there, the guide said it was the worst that they've ever seen. It was, it was nuts. Like we went, it was like, I can't, I just can't explain. I've, I've never had it happen in my life anywhere since or before that, where the mosquitoes were so bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how, I mean, I, I know this and maybe people that don't know it. How did you come up with the idea? I mean, to, to go to all these amazing places and go fishing. What was the idea when you first started? When we first started, I was actually on a lake in Canada, one of the places I love to fish, Lake Athabasca. 
uh, lake trout and pike fishing. And, uh, you know, we started talking about this idea. And I've done some, at that point, I'd done a couple episodes with a guy in the hunting industry. Um, and I kind of had a little background in it. And I thought, man, it, it would sure be cool to be able to do, because at that point, um, you know, we were still in that era of there were just so many bass episodes and so many walleye episodes. And there was guys, you know, just putting the, together shows that were very cost uh, conducive, I guess. Yeah. You know, they were just and it was and obviously, as we know, we're just talking to Brandon and, you know, the world, uh, you know, 80 percent of our market is, you know, the market is bass fishing. So it it makes sense. But in my in my opinion, so when I started the show, I wanted it to be about the crazy travel some remote locations fishing for species that are exotic and fun and adventure and, you know, piranhas. And, you know, the, one of the episodes we spotlight, we were spotlighting Cayman, you know, crocodiles, you know, in the, in the Amazon and, uh, you know, swimming with piranhas in the middle of the night, and, you know, the whole deal. And, you know, that was really what I had in my head for wild fish, wild places. And why I started it is that I thought that, I could bring a level of television um, that is Nat Geo and Discovery esque without, you know, going to that crazy, you know, obviously without the budget. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm, you know, so, so yeah, wild fish, wild places. But uh, if you go to the YouTube channel and you watch the why, like we have a video of why, and this explains the whole thing. And we understand that not everybody has that in their budget. Not everybody can go to do these crazy things and go to these crazy places. But, you know, the wild fish, wild places doesn't have to be that. It can be in your own backyard. Yeah. You know, you can have big adventures without spending a ton of money. And we get that, too. And we also cater to that. So we do a lot of how-tos and, uh, you know, local stuff. I love showing off Nevada. I mean, you know the deal. You've seen a lot of Nevada on my shows yeah. and local it, it, it's a, it really is a fantastic show. I, I, I we got Skippy there. Uh, I had Butch Finnegan ask ask about the Golden Dorado in Argentina. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> um, so we had a couple. We've had two Golden Dorado trips in Argentina. Um, I, if he's watching, Butch, if you're watching, type in. Uh, was it the jungle hike where we went into the remote camp, or was it the river cruiser? Because we've done both. Um, the river cruiser was on is on the Paraná River, which is the second largest river in South America, next to the Amazon, obviously. And my friends that own uh, Estancia Laguna Verde, which is on Jurassic Lake in southern Argentina, for the giant rainbows that you were talking about, yeah. one of these days maybe going on. Yeah. Um, they own and they've explored this Paraná River with a they call it the the Paraná Gypsy, and it's a liveaboard yacht that pulls these fishing boats behind it so once you get to this yacht you have your fishing boats right there lined up and every morning you're in a new location and you go fish for these dorado and wolf fish which was really awesome because i listened to one of your youtube uh live broadcasts you were talking about a frog fishing frogs yeah and you said something like anybody that knows about fishing frogs which apparently before i went to argentina i didn't know anything about fishing frogs <laughs> because we were catching wolf fish on frogs and you would have to count and in, in Spanish, of course you couldn't count in, the, yeah. in English. And when those wolf fish would eat the frog off the top, we would all, you'd hear us and the other boat, Uno, dos, <laughs> and a monster hook set and everybody screaming and laughing. And, and, uh, it, so it, that trip was epic. I mean, it, we caught lots of golden Dorado, um, got to see a beautiful part of the world and catch wolf fish. I mean, the wolf fish were, they weren't huge, you know, up to maybe like five pounds, but they were like catching largemouth on frogs, but they got big teeth. <laughs> yeah. It's, some of the episodes are just, are, are wonderful. Do they still, they still play on, uh, on, on is Amazon prime? We have them on both places. So our original airings are still going to world fishing network, which yeah. is where we've been for a long time. World fishing network. We go for about a year. We have you know, great viewership there, but then we're going to Amazon prime. We've been, it's been getting so much love, uh, from Amazon prime. It's crazy. Um, we're in the process now of getting the next three seasons up there. So we've got season six and seven now. Um, and, and season seven, I think still to this day is the craziest travel we've ever had. I mean, we were, I don't I can't even remember how many miles, like six, 
6,000 air miles or something, uh, 19 days in a plane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something crazy like that. But, yeah. Are, is there, <laughs> now that you're starting to film for season 10, are you – are you, where are you – can we even talk – I guess I could have yeah. asked you this yesterday. No. Can, it's, where it's, do you go for season 10? You know, uh, in a in a non-COVID-19 world uh, – um, Yeah. What we were doing, I, I already have one in the can. We were chasing big striped bass on the Sacramento River oh, nice. um, before this all hit, targeting that one fish. Last year, I did an episode, and I don't know if you remember seeing the Facebook post or the episode, but I chased a wiper, which yes. um, the wiper is a white bass, striped bass, sterile hybrid. Yeah. And we have them a lot out west here to control bait fish populations, and they grow big. And they get big, and they grow big fast, but they are hands down – um, the most difficult species I've ever tried to fish for, like really? target. They are just smart. They are elusive. Uh, it's unbelievable. But last year, with the help of one of my good friends, who you know, Austin Lindsay, that yep. was in the, <clears throat> he put together a pattern, a topwater pattern. And I had my production crew um, about eight or nine total days fishing for one fish. Really? Fish, yeah. So you're going, are I, you doing that again? Um, I did the same thing with a striper. So okay. earlier, so the first, so we'll come off of that, you know, this next, this last season, and um, the striper, we did the same thing. We were looking for a 30, 40 pounder though. That oh. my buddy was catching them on glide baits, oh. and it was like one of those things where you just you're gonna you're gonna fish for three or four days, and we're gonna hope for one bite. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I won't spoil for anybody, but uh, there could be slight disappointment at the end of that show. But well, we got some fish, though. But, yeah. Uh, Where else do you go this season? So we were supposed to be going steelhead fishing in oh. SeaTuck, Alaska. And that was May 11th. So that's canceled. Um, and that's one of my favorite places, too. I mean, the SeaTuck the River steelhead is epic. Um, you know, my one of my companies I've worked with for years, and you've met Jared from Yakima Bait. Yep. Um, Yakima Bait dude. Company. Just great people. Uh, maglets, those maglet plugs that they yeah. make, back trolling those with drip boats, uh, epic. Like, it's just awesome. So that was where we're supposed to go first, um, right? You know, we're supposed to be in Alaska. I've got a buddy of mine that owns a lodge on um, Lake Ileana, which everybody knows of Lake Ileana. It's super famous. So he's got a fishery that has lake trout and pike that nobody fishes. So I was going to go film – an episode, maybe an episode or two on exploring for Lake Trout and Pike, you know, something different. Um, we were going to be in Alaska doing the August thing, silvers, that sort of deal. Um, rainbow trout around Nevada, mm -hmm. <laughs> the Yukon, we're supposed to go to the Yukon again, which is fly in in a beaver flying every day, going somewhere new. Um, you know, do, all this stuff is there. Um, supposed to go back to Lake Athabasca. I was actually yeah. going to take, uh, if anybody watched anything last year, my wife co-hosted the show from beautiful uh, wife. How I, we 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 should go into how you have Jessica. I uh, have no clue to this day how this still happens. <laughs> oh, actually, I do. I know how great you are, but sh you married a beautiful woman. Yeah, and you know what's crazy? I mean, and I can fish here in a minute, but she's yeah, uh, get she's her in like, here. Yeah, I, she's. Do you know what? God bless my wife. She's on the front line. She's at the hospital working oh, okay. right now. So, Same with um, otherwise she'd probably be joining us. But she, she, you know, she's, she's a bad on this chat thing, by the way. It, oh, good, out a girl. So she, uh, you know, she's not only beautiful, but she's legit, right? Like, yeah. so she co-hosted the she co-hosted the um, the Argentina trip with me last year, and it was a huge hit. You know the deal, right? Like any w other women that are listening out there, women in our industry is huge. Mm -hmm. And to see a real, the real deal woman out there in sixty mile an hour winds chasing fish, I mean, it's awesome. It's so badass. Originally, we were going to go to Argentina and go Golden Dorado fishing in June. That's canceled. Um, so I I'm hoping that. At some point this summer, when this thing lets up, that I can take her to co-host another couple episodes with me up north, um, and, and that's a plan. So, lots of good stuff in the works. We're just hoping that we're just hoping that it, it gets to it, you know, and, and lets it happen. So. Yeah. Okay. Before we we run off here, you have to tell me about the lures that you're making, Dirty Dancer lures. How did this whole thing start? You know, and how uh, did I have one? 
you know, I just cause oh, I <laughs> the think- reason I just don't think that there be big in your oh, neck okay. of the woods. That's all. I didn't want to. I don't want to send you something and say, hey, since you're my friend, I want you to try to get a, this in a fish's oh, mouth. I would do that for you in a second. You know me better right. than that. Well, I think you could catch a big largemouth topwater because they're, mm. they're fur. You know, they, they, they'll they they'll dive just a hair and then float back up. And so I, they're dirty for pike. So I think the bass would like them. But they're made for trolling for salmon and trout and that sort of thing. And um, – there's some other stuff on the market that's similar, and I wanted to make something different. So when salmon and trout are tracking lures, and we know this from watching underwater footage, they get behind them and they track, like right behind them. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as they do something different, they grab it. And so I designed the lip on these wood lures um, to where they're not perfect. They're not uniform. They're different. And so the, the kick to the side. So what they do is they have this weird – tracking motion erratic as can be and then then they'll shoot and that's when the fish eats them so anyway i called the dirty dancer my wife came up with that awesome name Mm -hmm. our boy stephen farrell drew me the logo yep super awesome i mean that's my favorite part of this whole thing is the logo honestly (laughs) and uh anyway it's been it's been a very big success for me so far you know i started about a year ago selling them i've been designing them for another year before that and yeah, they're they're doing great. Unfortunately, they I made them more specific for like the pyramid market here because they were the number one lure at pyramid last year, May and June, hands down. I mean, they just outfished everything, and uh, you know it's closed now. So yeah. we're just kind of sitting waiting and seeing what will happen. But yeah, it's it's a cool deal. It's kind of it's kind of fun, you know. I mean, you and me, you know, Mikey, like probably everybody watching here as kids, you know, and growing up, like we dream, you know, we'd go watch bill dance and you know yeah. those guys on tv and and dream to be a part of that someday not knowing how it really happens and here you and i are talking to each other and we're you know we're doing oh, come on internet we'll catch up you know we're in the industry and now i you know i say okay you know, I, got... I get to i get to make lures now i'm i know amongst everything else Go ahead. okay mark tomlinson yeah. asked question for dennis what is your favorite old school go to lure bait when el- when all else fails? Oh man, <clears throat> that's a th- for trout uh, for trout specific. Um, all else fails. A spoon, spoon. yeah, <laughs> spoon. You know, and not just for trout too. Like thinking of thinking of that. Um, so rainbow trout cutthroat trout, lake trout, that sort of thing. All else fail, fails, and in my opinion, one of the most underutilized lures, even for trout and stuff, guys, you know, spoon fishing them. Yeah, that's what I would say. A spoon of some sort. Yes, yeah, even here down here for, for you know, like redfish and trout and stuff yeah. like that, uh, spoon fishing is wonderful. By the way, uh, your beautiful wife said worms or and or marshmallows. <laughs> So, so let me tell you. So I got you got to tell the story now. Okay. So when my wife and I first met, she was a fisherman. Like she would fish without me. Obviously, she was fishing on her own. So I told uh, this is kind of how we met. You know, we we met at a workout at my sister gym. Long story. Um, And I said, okay, you, you really are a fisherman. So let's go fishing. Okay. So we took her to Pyramid. So her and I went out, and I said we're gonna go trolling, and she's like, trolling. What is that? What's that? You yeah. know, like under a bridge with like trying to catch a troll. What, what is trolling? You know, and so I introduced her to this whole world and now fly fishing and now fly fishing is her favorite thing in the world. And but it always comes back to worms and marshmallows because that's all she knew as a kid. She fished a lot and all she ever used was worms and she, marshmallows. She caught fish on a, a marshmallow. Oh, yeah. Trout eat marshmallows like crazy. Yeah. Stupid. Mm, that's There's crazy. actually baits. People, there's a manufacturers that actually make marshmallow glitter bait that you can put on a hook. Really? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, Ch- worms and marshmallows, baby. Mm. And so uh, my wife and I always joke about the worms and marshmallows. So, yeah, that's right. Well, th- I, let me just say thank you to her for, for doing all that she's doing to help people that are maybe sick or whatever that's going on. <clears throat> As I still have a cough, which <laughs> is even worse. I, I Actually, you want to ha- – well, I'll – I, I might as well go into. It. I had to, I I got another pers- different prescription today. Uh, I called the doctor and the doctor's like, "Your 
you know, your nasal drip, you got to put flow nays and you got to do this and you got to do this. But the nasal drip is why you have your, that cough. And she's like, I'm going to, I actually got it right here. She's like, I'm going to put you on pregnizone. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I'm like, so now she's like, I you I need you to do Flonase and Zyrtec and Pregnizone. I'm like, uh, I've been I've been fighting this thing for for like 20 days now. I just dude, want- well that's a steroid. So you need to put you need to actually inject that into your butt cheek and then start losing <laughs> weight. Who do you think I am, Boudreau? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a different steroid. Never mind. Yeah, that's, that, that's <laughs> not the same steroid. Yes. Uh, hopefully, if it's something that's got to go anally, I'm not taking it at all. That's a, that's a one-way road there, brother. <laughs> oh, we're down a dark path. We, we could get ourselves in a lot of trouble there. Okay, yeah. well, everybody, make sure you go to uh, the, Check YouTube, out the, web- the website, yeah. the YouTube no, channel. No, the YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do an episode and put it on his YouTube channel for him. Well, Beautiful. it's not me. I'm going to edit it for him. Yeah, we're going to do the deal. I'm going to send you – are you editing on – well, we'll we'll chat after this. Yeah, I'm in uh, premiere. Yeah. A lot of our old stuff um, is there. A lot of new stuff is there on our YouTube channel, Wild Fish Wild Places, um, how-to videos, a lot of stuff for the Dirty Dancer and other sponsors and just general how-to information plus a bunch of – I make fun of myself on a few of them. Yeah. You know, I think you've seen that one. I'm an I idiot. You know? so, anyway, a lot of fun, and we would appreciate it to go subscribe and check it out. And, I always had a good following from my Florida, my Florida fans. Oh, yeah, you, friends. Yeah. I mean, you've been a tackle whips person for what seven or eight years. Yeah, exactly. And I just when I come to Florida to see, you know, the I we never get anything done. It's just, it's just awesome, man. I, I, in fact, you know, if they cancel that, I was actually telling Marcel, man, if they cancel that, I'm gonna miss seeing half of my family down know. there. You know, seeing you guys. And so anyway, yeah, I appreciate everybody down there. Yeah, we, we love you, man, and appreciate everything that you do. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy with, uh, you know, finding Jessica and, you know, you and I talk. When you and I talk, we don't really talk about anything we can talk on the air, which is really confusing because <laughs> we talk or about, business stuff. Yeah, we well, about. I don't know if it was business <laughs> stuff the other day, but it's, you know what I have to say? I think you're, I think you're one of the good guys in this, in the industry and, Right you know, you. I, I love you like you're one of the, one of my brothers. So, right back at you. I appreciate you guys. So everyone, go to his YouTube channel. It's Wild Fish Wild Places. Dennis is Mister. Dude, uh, uh, we'll have to do this again. Hopefully, this won't last, and I won't be doing these from the casa for very long. But well, you know what? What makes it nice from the casa though is it's easier for my time, my time zone, and getting together more often. So you know, hey, it's it is positive. I, can, I could do these on I. Mike and I had said we were going to try to do these on uh, like once a week, yeah. like as an extra show for the radio show. But they won't even let us in the studio right now, man. Yeah. I mean, so uh, anyway, dude, uh, tell everybody over there. I tell Mont and everybody I said hello and tell Jessica I said hello and that we love her. Yeah. And, and uh, thank you again for coming on and, and we'll do it again soon. Awesome. Thank you. Dude, we'll talk to you soon. Later, brother. That is Dennis is Mr. Wild Fish Wild Places. One of the best guys in the world. Um, just, you can't beat it. If you get, you should go to his YouTube. Hold on, I gotta blow my nose. Uh, he's in Nevada, so that's why he can't really do something. Um, when we usually do the radio show, it's, uh, you know, we're usually on from six to nine in the morning on Saturday morning. So calling him real early. I mean, he'll he'll come on anytime we ask him to. He's always been very generous with his time, and and it's always really, really fun to have him on the show. So uh, go there and check him out. He is really, really one of the good guys in the in the industry. Okay, well, we talked about it a little bit earlier, and uh, I want to just make sure I thank everybody. But I wanted to give you some some stuff that's going on, uh, so that you have. I'm going to take these off now. Uh, because I don't need them to hear what's going on. Some stuff in the industry. I've, I've gotten some some stuff for you guys to check out. If you didn't know, um, I've been trying to keep this all positive. But um, Michigan actually told anglers that they weren't allowed to go fishing with electric boats. So uh, Johnny Morris and, and Mark Zona did a great video. And I want to put that up there because I want you all to see it. 
And I'm also going to reach out to Mark and see if I can't have him on in an upcoming uh, video. So let's just watch that real fast. It's like two minutes. And I got some more other videos for y'all to watch. So here you go. Hi, this is Johnny Morris, the founder of Bass Pro Shops. Very blessed my whole life around the great sport of fishing. Today I'm in the boat with my son, JP, who's making this little film, this dog, Roscoe. I just think in these rough times, one of the joys we all have is to get outdoors in nature, reconnect with our families and friends. I woke up this morning with calls from two of my best fishing buddies, KVD, Kevin Van Dam from Michigan, and Mark Zona. They're very alarmed, and me too about what's happening in the state of Michigan and in some of the other parts of our country. I'm proud to pass along this message from Mark and to stand beside him and all of our other fellow anglers. We all have to stand together for the great outdoors and the great sports of hunting and fishing. Happy Easter. Hey gang, real quick, I wanna do a fast video about the order that was passed in the state of Michigan yesterday that we cannot use our boats with motors until the end of the month. Um, you can use kayaks, you can use canoes, but if I wanna go fishing alone or with my dog Zachers or my wife, I can't do that. Um, number one, that is the most asinine thing I have ever heard on planet Earth, okay? There's not been a lot of good that's come out the last month, but I've seen fathers, sons, mothers, daughters out on our lakes. Look, I'm not saying go out fishing. What I'm asking you to do, I'm begging you to do this, Monday morning, call the governor's office in Michigan and tell them exactly how you feel. I'm, I'm begging you to do that Monday morning. I hope you have a very happy Easter Sunday. Hey guys, if you don't know Mark Zona, one of the best guys in the industry, just you can't say anything nicer about Mark. Um, and this is this is kind of like a, a weird, I mean, I'm trying to keep it, you know, all positive, but that isn't a positive for us. We should be able to go out there and go fishing right now in, in this time. This is a really weird time in the industry for, I mean, not only for us that are staying home all the time, but for for us anglers. And, and this is this is something that shouldn't have shouldn't have happened and uh so i hope you can watch that and support anything that happens next because i have a whole list of things that i want to go through if you guys are missing the major league fishing stuff you guys are missing all sorts of great stuff jared littner was on the other day jason christie was on today um brent ayler has been on there's been a lot of great great anglers that are out there going fishing then they're broadcasting live so if you want to get get some great insights, because they the, uh, now some of the sound isn't really good, but these guys are have somebody that's a uh, that's using their cell phone as a camera person, and they're able to see the questions that you guys a ask, and um, you know this is this is a great opportunity for you to check out and learn from the best of the best. The same time, um, Bassmaster is doing a lot of the same things. They had Scott. Uh, Ronnie Moore had Scott Canterbury on the other day. Absolutely fantastic interview. I'm going to ask Ronnie to come on one of these here in the future, uh, depending on how long. I mean, right now, for the radio show, I think we're probably, um, <clears throat> and thank you, Jeff, uh, we're probably four to six weeks before they let us back into the studio is what I'm kind of hearing. So anyway, if you want some great stuff, go to Bassmaster. Facebook on Facebook and be part of their, their stuff at the same time go to major league fishing and you're not going to even believe the great stuff you'll be able to see also if you didn't get to see it I'm going to put the video up and I'm not going to I'm going to talk over the video I talked about this last week let me put it on here right now but if they can catch tunas and they catch sailfish remember if you're missing this, this the guy Hardy stuff of a large maker coming up on a sailfish. As you can and hear, Guy Harvey a, is doing live paintings every day. In East Maris, in Mexico, and um, a few years this back. is absolutely um, they can fantastic. Very, very quickly indeed. And very often they'll come up from underneath um, and take their prey by surprise. <clears throat> in fact, <clears throat> many I'll people have seen them part. come up under swordfish and, uh, and cut their tails off. 
I got a. You're able to ask Guy, Dr. Guy oh, wow. Harvey questions. Now, he's, he's telling you all sorts of stuff that I've never heard of in my life like this. Um, that, that coming up from underneath and cutting off his propeller as they do like that uh, is their standard uh, mode of operation. And many people have seen this out in the open ocean. I never have. And then they take their time and they come around and then they cut off the bill off the swordfish. Really? And render it completely incapacitated. The big ones do. So it's and like a they, massive fillet. And the, exact, <laughs> exactly. And then they can feed at will without any chance. So if you're missing some of the stuff from Guy Harvey, Guy Harvey is painting almost every day. You can go on there every day and watch Dr. Guy Harvey paint some of the greatest paintings that will probably be on T-shirts at some point in time. And his uh, Jessica, um, his daughter, I think that's her name, she actually goes on and you can ask him questions as this thing is going on. And it's absolutely stupid good. So check that out. That's a great thing to do right now. Like I said, um, if other news that has gone on, if you don't know, Major League Fishing finally announced that the Red Crest Cup, which they were going to do at the end of this season, is now going to be at Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they're going to be fishing Grand Lake on in 2021, February 23rd and 27th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They're going to have three 350,000 square foot expo. They're doing it big, but if you're in Tulsa and Oklahoma, congratulations you are going to have one hell of a little shindig that's going to be uh, happening out there. Also out there, if you don't follow Edwin Evers, the amazing Edwin Evers, he has a new series called Project E. Um, it's on his YouTube channel. It is fantastic. It's just another thing to 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 you know keep you stimulated during this time when we're kind of stuck indoors and maybe sometimes you can go fishing and sometimes you can't hold on i'm getting a text joe i saw your text thank you so there's lots of great things that's why i wanted to bring in topwater johnny in here and i wanted to get a hold of lenny from uh, uh the real time usa and and there's a lot of great things to go out there and watch um so you know what Get out there, enjoy the outdoors, and and enjoy the the new stuff that's out there. Last but not least, I'm gonna play this without any without me talking at all. If you are a saltwater fisherman, I saw this from a kayak fisherman named Brett Bartley, and I need to make sure I give him credit because I'm taking I'm using his video. Brett got on in the middle of the ocean a school of red drum. That is absolutely stupid. And if this doesn't get your, your juices going to go fishing, well then, turn me off. Just get out of here now. Because this is flat out awesome. Here we go. No way. Oh, God. All right, I got to put the phone down. Land this fish. <laughs> what? They're all over me. They're all under it. <laughs> Straight into it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What is even happening? It hit my boat. <laughs> what is this? Is this real? Wait, the wind's off. I'm gonna cut it off there and just say, Brett, killer job, dude. Killer job. That's the kind of stuff I like to see. Uh, next, last but not least, I want to give a shout out to a couple. I got to open something. Sorry. Hold on. I have to open something because I don't have the person's name written down. I want to give a little shout out. Holy cow. Do I got a lot of emails? What in the hell? 
I want to give a shout out to Robert and Dominic. Robert and Dominic are local guys here. And Do this is Dominic that you see on there right now. Dominic has been fishing, learning how to fish. And this young man is just flat out killing it. It was very nice to meet you. Thank you for sending the photos. But Robert and Dominic, Robert, thank you for teaching your son how to go out there and go fishing. Um, because that is, that's what we need to do more of. We need to get our kids involved. So thank you, Robert, for, for introducing your son into the outdoors. I appreciate it. And as a community, we appreciate that you do that for your son. And Dominic, thank you for whooping my ass in fishing the other night. I mean, I'm a man enough to admit when I get beat, and he beat me. He got bigger fish. I got more fish, but he got the big ones. So, Dominic, congratulations. Hats off. There's my hats off to you. Anyway, guys, uh, if you want to be on one of these episodes, if you want to be on next Wednesday, go to the YouTube, go to the Facebook page and just send me a private message. You need to have Skype, though. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. You need to have Skype. Um, thank you to Topwater Johnny. Go check out his page. Thank you to Lenny Strobel of Real Time USA. Go check out his page and the and that nationwide catch and release fishing tournament. Sorry that we lost him uh, a little bit early, but he has a great uh, thing, a great tournament. And you want to know what? The, it helps support muscular dystrophy, and that is fantastic fantastic that's right i do have a giveaway hold on i think where did it go um hold on i gotta move some stuff what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna upload this to youtube when i'm done uploading this go to youtube and just say you want to know what i want a chance to win that prize pack i'll have youtube pick it out but uh I won't be able to do it on here on Facebook, so you'll have to go to YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and just say you watched it and, hey, you want to know what? I want I want all of it. I can tell you. it's. I'll count it out. It's one. You want to see all of it? Here you go. It's a pack of power baits. It's some rage claws. It's another power bait. It's a, some gulps. It's some big shows. It's some, now, mind you, some of these have been open because I've had to take photos of them. Next, live target lures. Some more rage tails. Then you're going to get, as I move the microphone over here, a coalition baits. Giant. This is a five and a half inch bluegill. Savage gear, pulse tail bait fish. You're going to get the chase bait smuggler. I know you can't see it. You're going to get a Lunker Hunt weedless pre-rigged gambit swim bait. You're going to get, I'm not sure who makes this, but I think this is a live target crawfish. I don't know who may gave this to me, but this is another top water bait. Kind of cool. As a good, and then you're getting three Lunker Hunt turtles. You can see all three. Here they are. One, two, and three. Hold on. <clears throat> sorry i'm coughing one two and three you're getting all of that go to the youtube channel and just say oh, oh mother of god oh it came out good uh just say you want to know steve i like the show even if you don't like it tough shit say you liked it and then you'll get one of the you'll have the chance to win this but you got to comment on the youtube channel on this video after i upload it Again, thanks to Brandon Card. Thanks to my boy, Dennis Isbister from Wild Fish Wild Places. Thank you to Lenny Strobel. Thank you to, to uh, Topwater Johnny. Thank you to the people that I used their videos, Bassmaster, Major League Fishing, uh, Dominic and, uh, and his son and his dad. And thank you guys for watching and be part of, being part of this. This is I'm probably a little bit longer than I anticipated, but we'll do another one next Wednesday. I've reached out to a couple people. I'm really, really hoping I get... There's one person I'd really like to talk to, a young man, and I'm hoping he's able to get uh, Skype. 
and I reached out to a couple other people. But if you want to be part of this and you have a YouTube channel and you want me to do an interview with you, private message us and get on here. Guys, if there's anything, please stay safe right now. Please, please, please stay safe. And remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. We will see you soon. Cheers.